As 2023 trickles to an end and we look forward to a new year in 2024, I want to do a State of the Second Amendment update for everybody. There are five states that do not recognize an individual right to keep and bear arms in their state constitution still in 2023. We know that in December of 1791, the Bill of Rights was adopted, and part of the Bill of Rights is the Second Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, which says, well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Now, that is an order that is a command against the federal government. It is not an order or command to the state government, which is why I figured we're going to talk about the five states that don't have an individual right to keep and bear arms, but more importantly, since there are viewers in every state in this union, let's talk about what your state says. Now, this could be a little bit of a longer video because we're going to talk about all 50 states. Now, before I get too far into this, I want to show you this. This is the 14th Amendment to the United States Constitution. Specifically, we're going to focus on Section 1, which is the Due Process Clause. It says, all persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and of the state wherein they reside. No state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. Now, I bring that up before I jump into all these states because up until uh, very recent history, the Heller decision, which came down on June 26th of 2008, until that date, the Second Amendment was not recognized in this country as an individual right. It was more a collective right. And it stayed that way until June 28th of 2010, the McDonald versus the city of Chicago case. And I want to show you this too. Justice Alito delivered the opinion of the court with respect to those parts, concluding that the 14th Amendment incorporates the Second Amendment right recognized in Heller to keep and bear arms for the purpose of self-defense. So at that point, June 28th of 2010, not too long ago, that's when the Second Amendment was forced by Supreme Court ruling to be recognized by the states as an individual right. Up until then, guys, it didn't apply. Uh, it was a case-by-case -case basis, a state-by-state -state decision. Uh, so with that said, this, this is going to be a long, long video. Hopefully you'll stick by for this ride. I think it'll be an educational ride, one that people need to know. My name is Jared. This is Guns and Gadgets, and I'll bring you Second Amendment news all day, every day, no matter what happens or where on our Second Amendment, from victories to defeats <laughs> in litigation, obviously, uh, and the constant attempt to restrict our right to keep and bear arms. So if you want to know, stay in the know, subscribe to this channel down below. I'm a poet and didn't even know it. All right, so uh, I'm going to show you something on the screen, but first I'm going to put my stuff on, I forgot to put my watch on silence, sorry. Uh, let's show you a visual map uh, on a website that I found that was actually sent to me by a viewer, which helped. Let's go to it now. This is uh, from an, a website called procon.org. It's owned by Encyclopedia Britannica. Now I know it had other origins before, but I use this because of the map. This is a visual check for you because most people are visual. It says... Uh, 45 states include the right to bear arms in their state constitution, some for self-defense and defense of the state. The oldest of the provisions date to 1776, good year, in North Carolina, Pennsylvania, and Virginia, though all three have since been revised, the right remains in place. And I'll show you all three of those. Iowa was the last state to add a right to bear arms into its state constitution in 2022. Imagine that when their government edited an existing, an existing article. The U.S. Constitution, which includes the right to bear arms in the Second Amendment, governs D.C., which does not have a constitution of its own. Five states' constitutions do not include the right to bear arms. California, shocker, Maryland, Minnesota, New Jersey, and New York. So now you know the five that don't care enough about you to have a right to bear arms in the constitution for their state. That's something that you, the individual watching, can start to fix. Start a movement, start a petition 
for an amendment to your state constitution. You can easily research that. If not, you can call your state capital. Uh, different offices are different, have different titles, but you will be able to find out the process of starting a petition so that you can get something on the ballot to change your state. So be part of the fix. All right, let's go over to the next screen I want to show you. This is the constitutional right to keep mayor arm provisions for each state. And let's make this a little more visually pleasing for you. There we go. Um, I will, I know that the font is small, but I will read it out to you so that you can understand what your state says. Before I jump into it, this was uh, compiled by Professor Eugene uh, Vol Volok from UCLA Law. Uh, and this is published, as you can see there. And I'll have this link down below in the description if you want, so that you can get a copy of this. Let's start with Alabama. We're going to go alphabetically. Alabama first enacted their state constitutional right to keep and bear arms in 1819, and it's Article 1, Section 23, uh, and the spelling was changed from defense with a C to defense with an S in 1901. Alabama says that every citizen has a right to bear arms in defense of himself and the state. Let's go to Alaska. Alaska says, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. The individual right to keep and bear arms shall not be denied or infringed by the state or a political subdivision of the state. And that is Article 1, Section 19 of the Alaska State Constitution, the first sentence of which was enacted in 1959. The second sentence was added in 1994. Let's go to Arizona. The Arizona State Constitution says, the right of the individual citizen to bear arms in defense of himself or the state shall not be impaired but nothing in this section shall be construed as authorizing individuals or corporations to organize, maintain, or employ an armed body of men. That is Article 2, Section 26 of the Arizona State Constitution, enacted in 1912. Arkansas is next, and it says in their state constitution, the citizens of this state shall have the right to keep and bear arms for their common defense. And that's Article 2, Section 5, which was enacted in 1868. But originally in 1836, it said that the free white men of this state shall have the right to keep and bear arms for their common defense. The racism of gun control, right there, plain in, in, in normal, normal English, in black and white, the origins of gun control is racism. <laughs> Guys, if you don't know about that, do your own homework. But Arkansas, right out there for everybody to see. Uh, California does not have a provision which protects one's individual right to keep and bear arms. Colorado, what does Colorado say? Colorado says, the right of no person to keep and bear arms in defense of his home, person, or property, or in aid of the civil power when thereto legally summoned shall be called into question. But nothing herein contained shall be construed to justify the practice of carrying concealed weapons. That's Article 2, Section 13, which was enacted in 1876. What does Connecticut say? Connecticut hates the Second Amendment now, but what does it say originally and still in their state constitution? It says, every citizen has a right to bear arms in defense of himself and the state. It's Article 1, Section 15, which was enacted in 1818, and the original text came from the Mississippi Constitution. So they copied it, basically. Uh, and let's move to Delaware. Delaware says a person has the right to keep and bear arms for the defense of self, family, home, and state, and for hunting and recreational use. Article 1, Section 20, which was enacted in 1987. Uh, next is Florida. You can see how many times Florida has changed it. Uh, let's scroll up here so we can see that. It says uh, in Florida, A, the right of the people to keep and bear arms in defense of themselves and of the lawful authority of the state shall not be infringed except that the manner of bearing arms may be regulated by law. And then B says, there shall be a mandatory period of three days, excluding weekends and legal holidays, between the purchase and delivery at retail of any handgun. For the purpose of this section, purchase means the transfer of money or other valuable consideration to the retailer, and handgun means a firearm capable of being carried and used by one hand, such as a pistol or revolver, 
holders of concealed weapon permits as prescribed in Florida law shall not be subject to the provisions of this paragraph. C says the legislature shall enact legislation implementing subsection B of this section effective no later than December 31st, 1991, which shall provide that anyone violating the provisions of subsection B shall be guilty of a felony. And D says the restriction shall not apply to a trade in another handgun. And uh, all this was added in uh, 1990. Uh, B through D were. In 1838, it originally said that the free white men of this state shall have the right to keep and bear arms for common defense. Florida, Article 1, Section 21, showed the blatant racism around that time. 1865, the clause was omitted. In 1868, it said the people shall have the right to bear arms in defense of themselves and of the lawful authority of the state. In 1885, it said, the right of the people to bear arms in defense of themselves and the lawful authority of this state shall not be infringed, but the legislature may prescribe the manner in which they may be born. In 1968, it said, the right of the people to keep and bear arms in defense of themselves and of the lawful authority of the state shall not be infringed, except that the manner of bearing arms may be regulated by law. So, Florida has seen several changes of their constitutional right to keep and bear arms at the state level, state constitution. And uh, let's uh, move on to Georgia. Georgia says, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed, but the General Assembly shall have the power to prescribe the manner in which arms may be born. That was enacted in 1877, Article 1, Section 1. And in 1865, it said, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. And in 1868, it said, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. But the General Assembly shall have the power to prescribe by law the manner in which arms may be borne. Now let's move over to Hawaii. It says, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. And that was enacted in 1959, and you would never know the way Hawaii attacks the right of their people. Let's go to Idaho. Idaho has had a couple of revisions as well. And Idaho says, the people have the right to keep and bear arms, which right shall not be abridged. But this provision shall not prevent the passage of laws to govern the carrying of weapons concealed on the person, nor prevent passage of legislation providing minimum sentences for crimes committed while in possession of a firearm, nor prevent the passage of legislation providing penalties for the possession of firearms by a convicted felon, nor prevent the passage of any legislation punishing the use of a firearm. No law shall impose licensure registration, or special taxation on the ownership or possession of firearms or ammunition, nor shall any law permit the confiscation of firearms, except those actually used in the commission of a felony. And that was enacted in 1978. Uh, but Idaho, originally in 1889, it said, uh, the people have the right to bear arms for their security and defense, but the legislature shall regulate the exercise of this right by law. So let's move to Illinois. Subject only to the police power, the right of the individual citizen to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed, and that was enacted in 1970. Uh, let's go to Indiana. Their state constitution says, the people shall have a right to bear arms for the defense of themselves and the state, Article 1, Section 32, enacted in 1851. But in 1816, it originally said, that the people have a right to bear arms for the defense of themselves and the state, and that the military shall be kept in strict subordination to the civil power. Iowa has no provision at all. Iowa. It's mostly a gun-friendly state, but come on, y'all, let's, uh, let's fix Iowa. Kansas says, A person has the right to keep and bear arms for the defense of self, family, home, and state, for lawful hunting and recreational use, and for any other lawful purpose. But standing armies in the time of peace are dangerous to liberty and shall not be tolerated, and the militia shall be in strict subordination to the civil power. That was enacted in the state's Bill of Rights, Section 4, which was uh, put in in 2010. 
But the original one in 1859 said, The people have the right to bear arms for their defense and security, but standing armies in the time of peace are dangerous to liberty and shall not be tolerated, and the military shall be in strict subordination to the civil power. Let's go to Kentucky. Kentucky's says, All men are, by nature, free and equal, and have certain inherent and inalienable rights, among which may be reckoned. And then you have to go down to the seventh, which says, The right to bear arms in defense of themselves and the state, subject to the power of the General Assembly to enact laws to prevent persons from carrying concealed weapons. And that was uh, enacted in 1891. But before that, Kentucky had a few different revisions. Let's go all the way back to 1792. Originally, it said that the right of the citizens to bear arms in defense of themselves and the state shall not be questioned. In 1799, they changed it to say that the rights of the citizens to bear arms in defense of themselves and the state shall not be questioned. So it was just a little bit, change it from the right to the rights. Minor adjustment. But in 1850, they changed it to say that the rights of the citizens to bear arms in defense of themselves and the state shall not be questioned, but the General Assembly may pass laws to prevent persons from carrying concealed arms. So in 1891, they changed it from arms to weapons. Let's go to Louisiana, which their state constitution says the right of each citizen to keep and bear arms is fundamental and shall not be infringed. Any restriction to this right shall be subject to strict scrutiny. And that was put in in 2012. But the original state constitution said in 1879, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be abridged. This shall not prevent the passage of laws to punish those who carry weapons concealed. Uh, in 1974, it was changed to the right of each citizen to keep and bear arms shall not be abridged, but this provision shall not prevent the passage of laws to prohibit people, uh, to prohibit the carrying of weapons concealed on the person. Now let's go to Maine, and Maine's constitution says, as of eight, 1987, every citizen has a right to keep and bear arms, and this right shall never be questioned. Solid, pretty strong there in Maine. What did it say in 1819? It said, every citizen has the right to keep and bear arms for the common defense, and this right shall never be questioned. Article 1, 16, section 16. Maryland has no provision at all. Uh, so Maryland is behind the eight ball. Y'all live in Maryland. You can change that, like I said in the beginning, in the opening. Uh, be that person who starts that petition. Uh, let's go to Massachusetts. Now, Massachusetts is has been the same since 1780. It's one of the oldest standing ones. Uh, it says, uh, the people have a right to keep and bear arms for the common defense. And as in the time of peace, armies are dangerous to liberty, they ought not to be maintained without the consent of the legislature. And the military power shall always be held in an exact subordination to the civil authority and be governed by it, which is Article 117. Let's go to Michigan. It says, every person has the right to keep and bear arms for the defense of himself and the state, Article 1, Section 6, enacted in 1963. But originally, in 1835, it said, every person has the right to bear arms for the defense of himself and the state. And then they changed it in 1850 to say, every person has the right to bear arms for the defense of himself and the state. Small differences from capitalized S to lowercase s. Um, Minnesota has no provision. In Minnesota, you have no right to keep and bear arms in your state constitution. Now let's go to Mississippi says the right of every citizen to keep and bear arms in defense of his home, person, or property, or in aid of the civil power when thereto legally summoned shall not be called in question, but the legislature may regulate or forbid carrying weapons, uh, carrying concealed weapons. Article 3, Section 12 in 1890. Uh, but originally, Mississippi in 1817 said, every citizen has the right to bear arms in defense of himself and the state. Then in 1832, they change it to every citizen has a right to bear arms in defense of himself and of the state. And then in 1868, uh, all persons have a right to keep and bear arms for their defense. So a couple changes there in Mississippi. Missouri uh, currently says that the right of every person to keep and bear arms, ammunition, and accessories typical to the normal function of such arms in defense of his home, person, family, and property, or when lawfully summoned in aid of the civil power, shall not be questioned. The rights guaranteed by this section shall be 
unalienable. Any restriction of those rights shall be subject to strict scrutiny, and the state of Missouri shall be obligated to uphold these rights, and shall, under no circumstances, decline to protect against their infringement. Nothing in this section shall be construed to prevent the General Assembly from enacting general laws which limit the right of convicted violent felons or those adjudicated by a court to be dangerous to self or others as a result of a mental disorder or mental infirmity. And that is Article 1, Section 23, and that was enacted in 2014. Originally, Missouri in 1820 said that the people have the right peaceably to assemble for their common good and to apply to those vested with the powers of government for redress of grievances by petition or remonstrance, and that their right to bear arms in defense of themselves and of the state cannot be questioned. In 1865 was changed, same as above, but it added the lawful authority of the state instead of, quote, the state. And then in 1875, it was changed, and it said that the right of every citizen to keep and bear arms in defense of his home, person, and property, or in aid of the civil power, when thereto legally summoned, shall be called into question. But nothing herein contained is intended to justify the practice of wearing concealed weapons. In 1945, that the right of every citizen to keep and bear arms in defense of his home, person, or property, or when lawfully summoned in aid of the civil power, shall not be questioned. But this shall not justify the wearing of concealed weapons. And that was from 1945. So you can see there's some states that didn't want you to conceal your weapon. They just wanted open carry. Now we're at a state, a state of this country where if you're open carrying, uh, people crumble and start crying and start shaking vigorously like you just uh, summoned the boogeyman. It's crazy. Uh, let's go to Montana. Montana is simple. The right of any person to keep and bear arms in defense of his home, person, and property, or in aid of the civil power when thereto legally summoned, shall not be called into question. But nothing herein contained shall be held to permit the carrying of concealed weapons. You can see another one. Uh, Montana, Article 2, Section 12, as of 1889. Let's go to Nebraska. Nebraska said all persons are by nature free and independent and have certain inherent and inalienable rights. Among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and the right to keep and bear arms for security or defense of self, family, home, and others, and for lawful common defense, hunting, recreational use, and all other lawful purposes. And such rights shall not be denied or infringed by the state or any subdivision thereof. Article 1, Section 1, as of 1988. Nebraska, that's a good one. Let's go to Nevada. Nevada says every citizen has the right to keep and bear arms for security and defense, for lawful hunting and recreational use, and for other lawful purposes. Article 1, Section 11, uh, Part 1, enacted in 1982. New Hampshire. New Hampshire says all persons have the right to keep and bear arms in defense of themselves, their families, their property, and the state. That's Part 1, Article 2A, enacted in 1982. New Jersey has bupkis, zero. New Mexico, even though uh, you'd never know it by the uh, governor they have now, it says, no law shall abridge the right of the citizen to keep and bear arms for security and defense, for lawful hunting and recreational use, and for other lawful purposes. But nothing herein shall be held to permit the carrying of concealed weapons. No municipality or county shall regulate in any way an incident of the right to keep and bear arms, Article 2, Section, section 6. Now, the first sentence was enacted in 1791. The sentence, second sentence was added in 1986. But in 1912, it said, the people have the right to bear arms for their security and defense, but nothing herein shall be held to permit the carrying of concealed weapons. New York, zero. They don't love you in New York. You all know that. We all know that. Uh, North Carolina, one of the originals, it says a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. And as standing armies in the time of peace are dangerous to liberty, they shall not be maintained and the military shall be kept under strict subordination to and governed by the civil power. Nothing herein shall justify the practice of carrying concealed weapons or prevent the General Assembly from enacting penal statutes against that practice. Article 1, Section 30, as of 1971. But what did it originally say in 1776? It said that the people have a right to bear arms for the defense of the state and 
as standing armies in time of peace are dangerous to liberty, they ought not to be kept up, and that the military should be kept under strict subordination to and governed by the civil power. That was their Bill of Rights uh, in 1776. In 1868, it said, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. And as a standing armies in the time of peace are dangerous to liberty, they ought not to be kept up, and the military should be kept under strict subordination to and governed by the civil power. In 1875, it was changed. They added, nothing herein contained shall justify the practice of carrying concealed weapons or prevent the legislature from enacting penal statutes against said practice. Now let's go to North Dakota. North Dakota says, all individuals are by nature equally free and independent and have certain inalienable rights, among which are those of enjoying and defending life and liberty, acquiring, possessing, and protecting property and reputation, pursuing and obtaining safety and happiness, and to keep and bear arms for the defense of their person, family, property, and the state, and for lawful hunting, recreational, and other lawful purposes, which shall not be infringed. Article 1, Section 1, as of 1984, and it stays as is. Let's go to Ohio. Ohio says, now, the people have the right to bear arms for their defense and security, but standing armies in the time of peace are dangerous to liberty and shall not be kept up and the military shall be in strict subordination to the civil power, Article 1, Section 4, 1851. But in 1802, it said that the people have the right to bear arms for the defense of themselves and of the state, and as standing armies in the time of peace or dangerous to liberty, they shall not be kept up, and that the military shall be kept under strict subordination to the civil power. So they added security. Uh, it was the big change there. Oklahoma. Oklahoma says... The right of the citizen to keep and bear arms in defense of his home, person, or property, or in aid of the civil power, when thereunto legally summoned, shall never be prohibited. But nothing herein contained shall prevent the legislature from regulating the carrying of weapons. Article 2, Section 26, 1907. Oregon. Oregon says, the people shall have the right to bear arms for the defense of themselves and of the state, but... The military shall be kept in strict subordination to civil power, Article 127, and en enacted in 1857. Let's go to Pennsylvania, another one of the original three that uh, adopted it at the state level, Pennsylvania. It says, the right of the citizens to bear arms in defense of themselves and the state shall not be questioned. That was Article 121 in 1790. In 1776, though, it said, that the people have a right to bear arms for the defense of themselves and the state. And as standing, standing armies in the time of peace are dangerous to liberty, they ought not to be kept up, and that the military should be kept under strict subordination to and governed by the civil power. And you can see the recurring theme in 1776. They were like, eh, no, no quartering armies here, none. Rhode Island says the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Simple. Point blank, yet Rhode Island constantly infringes on their folks' rights there. Uh, that was enacted in 1842, Article 1, Section 22. South Carolina, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. As in times of peace, armies are dangerous to liberty. They shall not be maintained without the consent of the General Assembly. The military power of the state shall always be held in subordination to the civil authority and be governed by it. Article 1, Section 20, as of 1895. But in 1868, it said, the people have a right to keep and bear arms for the common defense. And then it continued, as in time of peace, uh, about the standing arms of dangerous to liberty shall not be maintained. South Dakota, the right of the citizens to bear arms in defense of themselves and the state shall not be denied. That's Article 6, Section 24, enacted in 1889. Let's go to Tennessee. Tennessee, what does our state say? It says that the citizens of this state have a right to keep and bear arms for their common defense, but the legislature shall have power by law to regulate the wearing of arms with a view to prevent crime. Enacted in 1870, Article 1, Section 27. Prior to that, in 1796, originally it said that the free men of this state have a right to keep and bear arms for their common defense. 1832, says that the free white men of this state have a right to keep and bear arms for their common defense. Again, the origin of, of gun control rears its ugly face. It's grounded in 
racism. Texas. Texas says every citizen shall have the right to keep and bear arms in lawful defense of himself or the state, but the legislature shall have the power by law to regulate the wearing of arms with a view to prevent crime. Enacted in 1876, Article 1, Section 23. It's like they just copied Tennessee's. In 1836, it said every citizen shall have the right to bear arms in defense of himself and the republic. The military shall at all times and in all cases be subordinate to the civil power. 1845, it said, every citizen shall have the right to keep and bear arms in lawful defense of himself and the state. 1868, it was changed again to say every person shall have the right to keep and bear arms in lawful defense of himself or the state under such regulations as the legislature may prescribe. Uh, Utah says the individual right of the people to keep and bear arms for security and defense of self, family, others, property, or the state, as well as for other lawful purposes shall not be infringed, but nothing herein shall prevent the legislature from defining the lawful use of arms, Article 1, Section 6, in 1984. But originally in 1896, Utah's constitution said, the people have the right to bear arms for their security and defense, but the legislature may regulate the exercise of this right by law. Vermont, one of the OGs, Vermont says that the people have a right to bear arms for the defense of themselves and the state. And as standing armies in the time of peace are dangerous to liberty, they ought not to be kept up, and that the military should be kept under strict subordination and governed by the civil power. Article 1, Section 16, Effective 1777. Virginia, one of the original three to adopt a state constitution version, said uh, that a well-regulated militia composed of the body of the people, trained to arms, is the proper, natural, and safe defense of a free state. Therefore, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. That standing armies in times of peace should be avoided as dangerous to liberty, and that in all cases the military should be under strict subordination to and governed by the civil power. Article 1, Section 13, enacted in 1776, uh, the state of Washington says the right of the individual citizen to bear arms in defense of himself or the state shall not be impaired, but nothing in this section shall be construed as authorizing individuals or corporations to organize, maintain, or employ an armed body of men. Article 1, Section 24, effective 1889. Three states left. West Virginia says a person has the right to keep and bear arms for the defense of self, family, home, and state or for lawful hunting and recreational use. Article 3, Section 22, Effective 1986. Wisconsin says, The people have the right to keep and bear arms for security, defense, hunting, recreation, or any other lawful purpose. Article 1, Section 25, enacted in 1998. And finally, Wyoming says, The right of citizens to bear arms in defense of themselves and of the state shall not be denied. Article 1, Section 24, enacted in 1889. So there you have it. The state constitutions of all 45 states that recognize in their state constitution a right to keep and bear arms. And we, again, the five states that don't have that right enshrined in their state constitution. The more you know. Guys and gals, I hope this was an educational video. I know it's long, but... It's a lot that goes into it, and uh, there's a lot of states out there, and they all say something a little bit different. So let me know if this was worth your time. Hopefully you watched the whole thing. Appreciate you all. Be safe, stay vigilant, and carry a gun to keep you, your friends, your family, your community safe. Remember, if your state is one of those five, you can be a part of the fix. Start the petition process to have something on the next ballot. I'll see you on the next one, y'all. Take care.